Hi, I'm Anne of All Trades, and this is Mr. Rigby. You're going to be seeing a whole lot of him in my videos, and he has just joined us to be the new farm boss around here. But you can go play for this part. In addition to building furniture full time, I own and run an organic farm in Seattle, Washington. And I wanted to take you along to show you what a day in my life looks like, what the morning chores are like, and what it really is like to live on a modern day homestead. Before we get started, I would love to give a huge shout out and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and this channel. Let's get started. I get my hands dirty. They show me no mercy. So I just keep working. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, everybody. What's going on? So we are in the middle of a very unseasonable cold snap. So I'm not running any water through the water lines right now, which means that I need to truck buckets of unfrozen water down to the animals several times daily, which is honestly just a great excuse to be able to spend some time with them and check up on them and just make sure that everyone's happy and healthy and staying nice and warm in the cold weather. Because the common area in our barn for the animals is so small, we have to really stay on top of taking care of the manure messes as quickly as possible. I've mentioned before in my barn restoration video that we put down rubber mats and put pelletized wood bedding on top of that and that really really has helped to abate a lot of the issues. It makes the barn a whole lot easier to clean. Another awesome tip I picked up from one of my friends is these sweet um, restaurant sweepers and you can sweep the poop right into these and you never have to bend over which is pretty glorious. You can take these out and dump them in a wheelbarrow and then take them to your compost pile wherever that is, which is great. The other huge thing that has really helped us to keep this place totally spick and span for them is the French drain project that we did a few months ago. And that was basically making sure that all the water that was previously running downhill into their common area in front of the barn was taken elsewhere so that even in the middle of a rainstorm, they're walking from dry land into a dry barn. And that just helps keep things a whole lot cleaner and a whole lot more more sanitary for them. Alpacas always poop and pee in the exact same spot, which makes it quite convenient for cleanup. And also speaking of convenience of cleanup, this gravel situation is not ideal, but it's also not permanent. We installed this gravel as the base layer for the French drain system. But as I mentioned in my project update video, we will be coming in here and um, building a retaining wall and putting sand in this whole area. The sand project, however, has been massively delayed because we actually can't get the trucks from the road to the pasture here where we need to put the sand because the ground is too soft. And basically we're just waiting for the ground to dry up enough so that we can get those trucks in and out. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, Hattie boy. You just calm your little jets. Oh, I know, it's so exciting. Hi, hi. Come here. Come on in. Hattie, Bella, come here. So this is actually pretty awesome because this is exactly why I built the barn stalls the way that I did. This allows us to do whatever kind of closing up we need to do, but then it can also be opened and they can come and go freely if they need to from each and all of the stalls. However, Howdy and Bella have a little bit of food aggression issues that we are currently trying to break them of, and that's why they get to eat here uh, all by themselves in this little room. And then here's Ike, Tina, and Dalai Lama, and they eat special alpaca food. Each and every one of the animals has a different kind of food. Um, that is basically specially formatted, formulated for their diet. However, almost all the animals subsist on hay and the grains are basically just to make sure that they're getting necessary nutrients and proteins that might not be available in their hay. I have an awesome friend named Clint who actually grows and harvests all of our hay for our animals here locally. And it's just a nice mix of orchard grass, very high quality, very nutritious, very good for all my animals. But I also like to give them a little bit of fermented food too to help with their gut health. And this is called chaff hay. This chaff hay is a fantastic amendment to the orchard grass that we give them because it's chock full of nutrients, make sure they get all those extra proteins that they need. And for animals and humans alike, a little fermentation, a little good bacteria is very crucial to your gut health. 
The most integral part of these animals' diets is the hay. And we give them a constant supply of, excuse me, a constant supply of fresh orchard grass that they can pick from as they like. And then we augment it with grain feed as well. So after everyone's fed and watered, it's time to do the morning milking, which gives me an awesome opportunity to kind of have a very regimented daily schedule because the goat needs to be milked at the exact same time every morning and every evening. And then that provides me with nutritious milk, which I can use to put on my cereal, to use in my baking, to use in my soap making, to make cheeses, to make yogurts and butter and all the good things that come from having a local organic dairy source right here at my fingertips. The next thing I've got to do is collect all of the eggs and feed the chickens. So we just get a couple little scoops of pellets here which are good for both the geese and ducks and the chickens. The chickens have their own little ecosystem up here. They stir and turn our compost, which is very rich in all kinds of little bugs and worms and other things that they can eat. And we also give them daily large amounts of garden and house food scraps, but to make sure that they still have a balanced diet, much like the other livestock, they also get these pellets, which are okay for the chickens, the ducks, the geese, and the guinea fowl to all eat. So they get to share from one nice little bucket here. Here we go guys. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I've been using Squarespace for the last five years to host my website. I started in 2014 and if you know me at all, you know that I'm not a huge tech genius. And so to have a platform that allows me to just kind of drag and drop things works really, really well. Squarespace also provides me with tons of awesome analytics, which improve my ability to provide more relevant content to my audience. They have a variety of fantastic templates, which make putting your content into a visually appealing site that much easier. You're able to use the Squarespace email campaigns to easily get in touch with your audience, which is also a fantastic tool. And it's super easy to get a new domain or to transfer your domains into a Squarespace format. So be sure you head on over to Squarespace for a free trial. And when you're ready to get set up, go to squarespace.com slash and of all trades for a 10% discount. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, for supporting my channel. If you are interested in supporting my channel further, the link for the Patreon is below. I still have a few fluffy calendars left, so check those out on my website, anivaltrades.com. As always, I hope you leave this video feeling challenged, inspired, and excited to get outside and to try things with your own hands as well. Cheers.